Little Hawk Radio's nine lives. Stoned Hawk. Totally stoned. Totally stoned Hawk. Nine lives. Little Hawk Radio's nine lives. Little Hawk. Little Hawk. Little Hawk Radio. Freefall Entertainment. Freefall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Freefall Entertainment. Freefall. <laughs> Freefall. <laughs> Freefall Entertainment. What are you? What are you talking about? This is fucking crazy shit, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. I'm a crazy motherfucker! Oh. Julian, you're, you're a crazy motherfucker, Jesus Christ! still be here. Welcome, dear feathery frilly jelly bean friends. Just when you thought poor old Julian had finally met his maker with a candy cane stake through the heart. Nothing works out how you think it should now, does it? Just bring your little ear a little closer, dear. My little godlike god or, or goddess. The sun does rise, sure, and the planets do align, don't they? What is this, frilly psychedelia? Well, one thing is for sure, these are strange days. And I'm your host, Julian Terry, and I've programmed my microphone to delight you. Now let's slide down into radically radio pitch black heaven. Yes, I live again. This must be Little Hog's Nine Lives. Girls! Are you listening? Have you tuned in? Into my mysterious dirge, into the glowing swamp, the frequency sizzle and the mantle boils loose. 
Sing, sweet maiden. Let's slip down into the wriggly worms. Join me in my coffin. For you know I am the ghoul that splashes about in the blue coals of death. Yes, but here... I live again. Yes, we resurface into another day. The world is riddled and crawling with those who refuse to enter the light. And I am dead, was dead, and will be dead. But right now, dear feathery frilly prisoner, we live again. We live our ninth life with little hog radios. Nine lives. <laughs> Vaginas, vaginas, mesmerism. Vaginas in the crystal ball. Pray today so you'll get laid. And not be given to fascism. Vaginas. Vaginas, sometimes they are all I can think about. I dwell in the church of the vagina. I sit in the pews with vaginas. Oh, dear Lord, put thee from your misery. Have it your way, or have it mine. Angels sent to earth for reproduction. Pray to get laid, or pray to die. Have it your way, or have it mine. 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 Angels sent to earth for reproduction. Pray to get laid. Or pray to die. Angels sent to earth. Angels sent to earth for reproduction. Have it your way, or have it mine. Have it your way, or have it mine. Angels into earth for reproduction. For reproduction. Reproduction! For reproduction! That's it!
Green Guild Earthling, and welcome back to the Sing Song Sickness. That is Little Hog Radio, and this is, yeah, sure, it's Little Hog Radio's Nine Lives. Sing with me, sure, set your soul free. It's heaven. Let's plop our waxy bodies straight down into the hot tub of black magic. It's just like Christmas for such like ghouls. Yeah, it's story time. This hairy tale is proudly titled The Wolf and the Planets. Don, start the hairy music, would you? Okay, the wolf was hypnotized. He stood floating, zooming in and out in the swirling washing tub of perception. The stars were a maze. His thoughts were projected. Nearby to the right in space, a creamy maiden sapphire silk planet hopped, using the planet as stepping stones. The wolf was not pleased and his eyes beamed red. Why are we here? What is this we've beset? He thought to himself, the maiden oblivious, dreaming of steaming meadows. She she felt there was danger near, but, but carried on oblivious. Now this is the part where, where I would normally, or should, introduce a new character, or even a subplot. But I'm not going to. You see, when I was a boy, one of my earliest memories was that wolf. And sure, As I grew, I dreamed of the girl. Manic depression! Now the wolf was spitting solar sparks as the maiden pointed and tipped her tiny heels into every frozen ocean. Oh dear, she said to herself. The wolf fondled his necktie and he dropped it and and let it skim over one of the planet's oceans. Sweet arrogance! Sweet eloquence! The wolf arranged his necktie through his paws, fantasizing to strangle the frolicking, joyous maiden in sapphire. Just like a video game, each planet once stepped on, spoiled, turning purple, and dropped down into space. But she carried on without a care. This was the time for the wolf to act, but this was no regular murder, as this is no regular story. And this is the story of the wolf and the planets. Now, here is uh, the voices of Black Magic. Was the 
My smart there. Jesus, fuck! Where is that smoker drop there down in bloody hell? Can, Don, can you get the fucking smoke there? It's, it's fucking, it's fucking under my chair or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, if you were thinking that this is the most surreal of all the Little Hog radio programs, then you would be right. Don Slizani and I have all had a spell of manic pleasure adventures, and you will hear all about them over time. Sliz got this new silly little bitch, Barbara. Super small waist and a ribcage like a birdcage. When I first saw her, well, the sight of her almost knocked me off my chair. But who dang no? Let's Sliz have her, I repeated to myself. It's good to see a brother getting a bit of action for a change. Arnie wasn't coping well with his jealousy and kept letting his potato gun off into her plastic-esque Barbie doll legs, making them all purple and blotchy and uh, the sick bugger. I fucking took Arnie by the hair and, and out to the horse-watering trough and held his head down in all the piss and straw and shit until he stopped kicking. And then I tossed him high and dry into the dirt. Don insisted on stuffing the potato gun up his ass, and at first I thought to stop him. Gold diggers! Later, as Arnie slowly recovered, Barbara gave us all a treat with a slow tabletop strip. But it all got manic, and well, Arnie kicked the door in, as if looking for a showdown in a saloon. He was fucking throwing cheers, 
Smashing bottles over heads? It's a sure thing. Old Arnie boy's got a got a temper on him. You know, when he's been violated. Violated. You know, when he's been violated. Violated. So guns, girls, and black magic. Guns, girls, and black magic. Okay, so guns, girls, <laughs> and black magic. Guns, girls, and black magic. <laughs> yeah, that's the old motto for Little Hog Radio, sure. And if you'd tuned in before into previous programs, you'd have plenty more insight into what I mean by that. Here we are in the light of the silvery dirge moon. <laughs> Some will tell you when it comes to storytelling that, that well, like, uh, the stories have to be good. But fuck! I'm certainly no Edgar Allan Poe. Hell no. You don't need to be good at, at it at all. Pretty much anything will do. It, it's not necessarily a necessity to be good at it. No, not at all. Sure, some rules must be observed, but, well, you, you know, you know what to do. 
just like when I came in into the station earlier, you know, this afternoon, and, oh, and, and uh, uh, no, not this time, no, not, no, no, no evidence of witch spells, no, not today, but instead I caught all the station girls in the shower. Yeah, that's right, there is only one shower. Look, in small towns like this, homosexuality can be scandalous. I didn't retrieve those particular images with guilt or, or, or remorse. Hell no, and, and like I said before, I am no Poe. Or prude. So, I did just as any dude would do. And got into the mojo like a pro. If you, if you, if you get my sprinkle. You're back with superb splendidity, personified as Mr. Julian Terry, the ghostly ghoul of internet radio, your fun-loving host, that's me. Actually, yeah, it was just last night, yeah, shit, uh, it was, uh, yeah, so last night, Don and I had a contract. Old Pops wanted us to pay a visit to Drifting Drew's place. In the night air we drove, and at first it seemed la uh, no one except a couple of whores were home. But Don soon sniffed Drew out, hiding in the mower shed under, under the butter-coloured water tank. Don had already torn Drew's ear half off when he threw him into the sofa. The poor cunt was screaming and, and, and sobbing too, and I made my way over to nestle into one of those scantily clad, terrified whores. I quickly figured I'd best get comfy, as it was apparent that Don was in one of his mm, evil moods. As you know, Don is a cross-dresser, and sometimes he plays fucked up games. Don had Drew's trousers over the lampshade and was attempting to put the other whore's panties up and over Drew's knees when some other fucker's gun went off outside. I looked over fiercely at the bitch on the couch and, and saw that she had a secret second cell phone. The bitch! In one action, I pistol whipped her high cheekbone and took cover using the first bitch as a shield. Some stupid giant grunt was visible in the driveway floodlight. Don was very agitated and itching to act. Julian, hold Drew there, mate. 
that that fucker is. I assumed he meant dead. But he was so eager he wasn't interested in completing his sentences. Drew was looking at me with last day on earth eyes. And I heard the catch on the fly screen and, and some scuffing about on the driveway. I urged Drew with my gun over to the liquor cabinet. And, and, and I downed half a bottle of Jack. The little bitch with no panties seemed keen on cozying up. Drew nearly jumped out of his skin, checking his chest for bullet holes. Don burst in again. Julian, there's fucking more grunts coming up the road. We best split, cunt. Then he turned to Drew. I'm feeling merciful tonight, you faggot. Old Potts gives you two days. Slizzle be at the Whitey, 3 p.m. Tuesday. We'll be back, cunt. I grabbed the bitch with no panties and, and in the flick of Don's wavy red hair, our trio fled out the back door. I let off a few cover shots and threw that bitch in the Tirana. Don hit the floor and we swerved those fuckers off their feet and into the dirt. Don looks at me, Jesus Christ Julian, are you half cut? Where's the other bitch? 